Thanks, Tom, for giving me, he left. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know about you, but you know, we had one to it a while ago, and it's kind of digesting now. So if I start to fall asleep up here, would you do something exciting to keep me awake? Dance, you know, you can, you can, you can throw flowers. You could, you know, something like that. Um, lens cap. <laughs> um, okay, so powerful toys, uh, toolkit approach. We've heard a lot of stuff today um, uh, in the keynotes in particular about uh, bridges and things like that. And I wanted to talk about my approach to doing, to solving some of the problems people have talked about. Um, so really quickly, I'll go through me. Uh, mentioned I'm a Samba team member. I've been there for 16 years. And in that 16 years, I think the focus of everything I've done really is to try to expose as much of uh, how this stuff works as I can so that it's not isolated, so that it's not, you know, just kept within a small group of people. Um, one, of the, one of the first things I did along those lines is I actually wrote a book um, and it's still the only book I know of out there on how to implement the SMB protocol. Um, a former Microsoft Docs contractor. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> After I wrote that book, and I was doing some consulting work, getting Samba integrated with a proprietary distributed file system, and it was a lot of fun. Not, but you know, I was doing this work, and I got this call. It was 2007, and I got this call from Microsoft. Like, you guys, huh? But they said, no, no, really, it's okay. We just, we just threw in the towel in the EU. We gave up. We're on our backs with our legs in the air, going, nya, 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 and we need your help. And so they asked me to come in and document the SMB protocol for them. So the official specs, I was the lead author. Um, the documents are called MSS, uh, sorry, MS SIFs and MSSMB. And they're now out of date, of course, because we're getting rid of SMB1, which is what they're called together. But those two docs I did with the team. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Jose Rivera can't be here today. He was scheduled to speak earlier, but he was the other key person writing those docs. Uh, and it's kind of a cool thing, because here I'm a member of the Samba team, right? And Microsoft is calling up and saying, we need your help. That was kind of amazing. And it was kind of cool. Um, I, I do like my ice cream. And um, I'm an incurable idealist. I think it'll all work for the better if we work hard at it, okay? Um, all right, just to be clear, the opinions expressed are my own and not those necessarily those are the voices I hear in my head, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So I want to talk about what challenges we're facing. And actually, it's really nice that some people have done a much better job of explaining those challenges earlier today. That's a good thing. Um, talk a little about what I mean about toolkits. Um, uh, some things that have been churning in the background for a while now. Uh, something called Carnival, which is actually what is uh, what was described in the uh, the presentation description in your program. And then a little bit of uh, Q&A at the end, which we already got scheduled. So the challenge, Windows interoperability, right? That's the big thing here today. That's why we're here, right? And the reason you're here is that most of you get it. I've been in the open source community for a long time now. And there are a lot of people who look at me and say, well, I, I do use Samba. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. But um, like, why would you care like what Windows does? Because you're a Linux guy, right? And you, why do you care what Windows? Yeah. Because the world is real around us, whether we like it or not. And there's a lot of Windows out there. And what we've found in the Samba team is that the more leverage we give people to work with Windows or other platforms that might be available, the more leverage we have to do what we want to do, all of us, our data, our information, our tools, our toys, whatever it is we need. And what's really cool is the presentation just before that Tom gave, we're showing you all the tools you can, you can now use to dig into what used to be closed proprietary formats that you couldn't get into, you couldn't use, you couldn't expand on, right? Windows, however, is big. 
really, really big. I mean, you wouldn't believe. how You think it's a long way down to the chemists. Anybody know what I'm referencing? Anyway, the point is, it's really big. When, when we first started doing this work, there were maybe 100 docs. Okay, Daryl said this morning, I thought, wow, we're way up there now. We're at 500, right? Daryl said, no, more like 1,000. <laughs> I'm like, really? There's a lot of stuff out there. All right? Hundreds, 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 thousand documents, okay? Um, network protocols, file formats, uh, APIs, uh, dictionaries of what the terms mean, you know? And Obeyed has a, a blog post that from a few years back that translates between what we called things before we had all this documentation and what we have to call it now because Microsoft said so. We have all this stuff. It's cool stuff. And it's available to us. Um, SMB is only one example. And each of these different things you know, that's out there is really an opportunity for somebody to say, hey, I can dig into that and I can do it this way and I can make it happen this other way and I can build something new. Open change is an example, right? We have an opportunity there. We can do something that makes the whole computing ecosystem better, more accessible, more flexible, more available to people around the world. We should implement all of them. People know who Andrew Trigel is? He's the guy who founded Samba. He started the project many, many years ago. And at a Samba XP conference, and as you know, Samba XP is coming along around again next week in Göttingen, Germany. At a Samba XP conference a few years back, he was sitting around with me in the dining area, just ch chatting, just talking over dinner. And he says, you know, if somebody had the money and the time get a bunch of developers together. We should implement all of these things to prove that the specs are good and, and to show that it can be done. And you know, we should do all of them. That would be the great thing to do. And yeah, it would. But I think what we have to do is pick our battles, uh, choose what's going to be the most effective, right? And, and implement the key parts. Once you have those key parts down, by the way, you can build on top of them. So. Julian was talking, or Volker was talking about how um, we have all these levels. We have the, you know, we, we build RPC, we have, um, you know, other things on top of RPC, all these different, well, if you have the core SMB part, the way Samba does, and you build that R RPC on top of that, and you can build Active Directory on top of that, and you can build, you know, you can build from parts. I like Lego. Anybody here play with Lego? I, I still have piles of it. All right, so that's what I mean by toolkits. Look at that, Lego, sort of. Um, modules, libraries. Uh, again, Tom just offered us a library for parsing some of these files he's talking about. Um, things that are small enough to be replaced when they get old, when they get, oh, look, we found another 15th you know, bug in the same type and we've got to rewrite the whole thing in a new language or whatever. You can replace it, all right? With clearly defined APIs, that makes that easier. So you have to work on this. There's something else that people have been talking about. We need those clear APIs, right? Um, and and well-documented is a key thing, and I'll go into some of that later on, but it's really important to explain not just what you've done, because that's really in the code, right? Look what I did. Why'd you do it? Why do you go through the loop this many times but always skip the last one? Is that on purpose, or is that a bug? I don't know. There it is in the code. Is that what you meant to do, or is that just a bug? Well, now we have to figure it out. But if you document it, we always skip the last one because it has this meaning and it does this in this situation and we'll get it later when we do the other thing. Okay, now somebody's got a clue. They know why you skipped the last one, right? Well documented. And this is an old model. This is nothing new. I'm not, you know, I'm not teaching you a new paradigm in programming. This is something, you know, you've already learned. Basic software design. It's, uh, you know, it's seeing a resurgence. We see in web services a lot of emphasis on the APIs, right? And a lot of emphasis on here's the documentation that tell you what you can and can't expect from these APIs. This is what you ask for. This is what you'll get back. Don't go over here. Bad things happen, right? That's what we're talking about. Um, and none of this, and this is the hard part, none of it leads directly to a product. You know, a lot of people, say, you know, my son, when he was little, he fell in love with Blender. Remember Blender, you know, Blender to make ray tracings? And he would take these files and put things together and make little patterns and then run it overnight and the next morning he'd have 
a cool blob on the screen. Hey, that's a cool blob. Yeah, but it's not what I wanted. Okay, so adjust it, fix it, spend some time. No, I just want to get what I want. Right? A lot of people just want to get to the end result. They want to be there. They don't want to take the journey in between. Right? We have to take the journey in between, and sometimes it takes patience. Sometimes you have to, you have to work a little bit to get all the way to where you want to go. Samba is, let's see, 20 and 91. So um, we're talking about you know, f uh, 24 years now. That's how long it took us to get to where we are with Samba. And we're still running to catch up with Microsoft. Okay? Jasus is a case in point of what I mean by this kind of you know, toolkit approach. What do you want to, you know, how do you want to build something? What do you want to do when you start with something and see what you can build up from there? All right, JSIFS was this idea I had after I had a argument <laughs> with Andrew Tridgel, Tridge. He and I were on the phone. Um, we talked for a while. We were talking about architecture of product, Samba, how it fit, how all the pieces work together, how everything was integrated. And I said, yeah, but we should do it this way. And he said, yeah, maybe that's a good idea, but it's not for Samba. Okay, so the next morning I went out and bought my very first and only book on Java. I learned a little bit of Java, and I put some of the most god-awful Java code in the world out on the web. And some poor fool wrote to me and said, you idiot, I can write better Java code than that. And he's still running the project. <laughs> but the project, 15, 14, 15 years old now, um, was an SMB1 client toolkit written in Java. It was intended originally to be client and server, but we never got to the server part. We wrote the, we wrote the client part in Java, and we put it out there, and I did you know, a lot of the here's how it works, and he did a lot of here's how I coded up, and it's all in parts and pieces, you, you know, all the pieces you can look at, uh, different modules, very object-oriented, of course. Um, and we put it out there, and we, we immediately got things like another person who came along and said, hey, I can use that to test my understanding of the NTLM authentication protocol over HTTP. And sure enough, well before Microsoft spilled the docs, and this is where Obeyed has trouble because this is where the wrong definitions of terms came from, this guy wrote a whole set of documentation and a whole toolkit for doing NTLM authentication over HTTP using Java on Apache or whatever other system you were running under it. And boom, we had another layer right there. And since we didn't have docs, we didn't know what to call anything, so he made up names and makes a Bade's job harder. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's what that became. Um, and, and then JSIFs wound up be, being used in a variety of embedded systems. I've heard of cases where uh, client applications were written for uh, supercomputers, actually, using JSIFs because that was what was available. Let's write this. Boom. Done. And then, then a, an interesting thing happened. I was playing with my very first Android device, and I downloaded a package that said I can access files over SMB. Oh, cool. All right. So I downloaded this package, and I'm going to test it out. And of course, what do I do? I fire up the, wire, the, the Wireshark, right? I fire up the packet sniffer. I want to see what it's doing. And what did it do? It said, hi, I'm Jasifs. And most of the tools out there now for Android that will access your SMB server are actually JSIFs. Okay. The problem we have is that really we've kind of petered out. The project is kind of like, okay, it's here. It either needs some new, a new infusion of enthusiasm to add SMB 2.3 support. Um, it needs a new, uh, you know, a new group of people to come in and say, oh, wait, this is cool. I'm going to add modern authentication. Let's build Kerberos authentication back. There was somebody who did that for a while, and it kind of fell out of use, so it's not very strong. Um, right now, the community is small. We need a bigger, bigger community around this. And it might mean that this guy who took it over from me years ago needs to have it taken over from him. Somebody m else might have to grab it and say, okay, we're going to fork it and do a new one. I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Okay, Samba is also a toolkit. It's a very long-standing project, right? It is, has a very strong community. This is a good thing. Um, I mean, it's big enough to have its own conference every year. That's a big thing, okay? 
Um, robust code base, I, honestly, it's really hardened. There are bugs. We find bugs all the time, and what do we do? We fix them. How about that? What a concept. Um, it is the foundation for open change. Open change is built on top of it. Am I correct? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, it's used in everything from little Soho NAS devices, little tiny ARM-based devices that you plug in at home and plug in a hard drive, and oh, look, my whole network's got a new, new chair on it, right? To, uh, to clusters of large-end servers, right? It's, it's been using, used in uh, all sorts of very big areas. Um, and this is the one that gets me. I, I get contacted a lot by uh, startups in California and elsewhere in the U.S. and around the world, actually, a few times, uh, saying to me, hey, could you come work for us for a while? Because we want to take Samba and plug it into our product. Because we want to have all this Windows interoperability. We want to take Samba and put it into our product. Okay? And it's used in a lot of products that way. Uh, Red Hat Storage is all, you know, that's how it gets SMB. Uh, a variety of other tools and toys out there that, if you look closely, they're Samba. Right? The thing is, and this is, this is controversial here, I'm going to, you know, be honest with you. I also get approached by these companies and they get told all sorts of things about why they don't want Samba. Okay, the biggest one is usually GPLv3. They say, that's, that's dangerous, I can't touch that, it might make my hair turn green. Right? If I use the GPLv3 stuff, it, it might, you know, I might, I might fart out on my armpits. Right? Uh, um, there are a lot of subsystems within Samba. It's a discussion we've been having actively within members of the Samba team who are here today. Um, talking about all the parts and pieces that are, you know, stapled together inside. It's a very large code base. I think the last time I looked, it was well over a million lines of code. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, and remember, I, I, I think back here I said something about uh, subject matter experts. I didn't talk about it. Subject matter experts means that there are people like me, there are people like Volker. He's here somewhere. Uh, there he is up at the top. Um, Simo is, is here today, um, who really know how this stuff works. I mean, I knew it well enough that Microsoft actually contacted me to say, let's work on this together. That's kind of cool. All right. We know this stuff really well. The positive of that is that Samba has a lot of that knowledge built into it. The negative of that is that it winds up becoming this cathedral atmosphere of those priests in the temple who know the secrets, right? Again, I've spent a lot of my career trying to break that mold, but that's, that is a, a factor that we have to consider. So a lot of people tell me that Samba really is very daunting and monolithic, and it's very hard to work with for them. All right, and so arguably that makes it not a toolkit. It makes it more of a Christmas tree that you hang ornaments on, right? So they say, well, here's my, my brand new product that I'm making, and I want to add Samba to it, but Samba really wants the product to be added to Samba. Again, that's, that's a perception, but that's, that's the feedback that I get, right? Um, and in fact, that argument is part of the reason I started JSIFs, is that we wanted to have this toolkit kind of thing that people could say, okay, I got enough knowledge, I got enough know-how, and I got the parts. I can build what I want. Right? So let's talk about some of those toolkits. Um, JSIFs is one. I'm going to talk a little bit about something called LibSIFs, which isn't very big, but I'll talk about it anyway. Stib, Prequel, and Carnival, which is the biggest one on the list. Um, these are examples. Most of them need uh, more attention and a grander sense of purpose. All of them can be used as example code, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, learning tools. So JSIFs, the point of JSIFs is it has a purpose and it has found its niche. And all I really want for it from now on is for somebody to say, hey, that's a really good idea. I'm going to go the next step. I'm going to add the advanced authentication. I'm going to go SMB2, SMB3 client. I'm going to make it useful for the next 10 years. Right? So it's LibSIFs. LibSIFs was an idea I had. Remember I said a while back that I wrote a book on SIFs. And during that time, I needed to have some test code. And I started slamming the test code together into a little bit of a library. And I never finished it. Let's be really honest. I never got very far with it. I still have the code. And it's still valid code. It's still good. Um, but I also over-designed it. I worked too hard to make it fancy and cool so that it would all you know, fall into the right patterns and trees. I've got to simplify it down. But it's there, and it could be revitalized. It revitalized. Um, I know Volker mentioned earlier NetBIOS over TCP, NBT. 
NBT is something that Microsoft has said for many, many years now. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. It's still there. All right. So it's something at least we should have working. That part is working just fine. The code is very well documented. I tend to write um, sort of an 8 to 2, a 4 to 1 ratio comment to code. It's pretty hefty. I, I, I'm verbose. Can you tell? No, you can't tell. I'm not verbose. Do I talk too much? I don't talk too much. I think I talk enough just to write. But no, never mind. Um, it has some of the SMB1 components in it. Uh, it could be re revised, and I've learned a lot from doing this. So this is a good thing. But uh, it's out there. It's something that we could build on if there's a group of people who wanted to play with it learn more about what SMB, SMB is all about. Um, a while back, you know, when we started getting these documents uh, from Microsoft and Tridge said we should implement them all, I started implementing some of them. I started with easy ones. Okay? Microsoft has something called BITS, um, Background Intelligent Transfer Service. Uh, so my implementation doesn't do the intelligent part because the intelligent part is all about measuring bandwidth and uptime and downtime and also uh, who cares. Bits is basically an extension to HTTP. It's small, it's fairly simple, there's not a lot to it. Um, and it's useful, useful for transferring data to and from Windows. The download is simply HTTP with a few little tweaks made. Upload is kind of interesting because you do it in bunches. You get this much up, get this, and you can stop. And then you can start again. You can say more. So it's a way to background transfer things to and from Windows servers. Um, and Windows Update uses it for downloads. That's a bits download. Okay. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, bits also supports branch cache, which is the Microsoft distributed caching system. And if you turn this on, if you're in a big Windows shop and you turn this on on your systems and you let's say use peer-to-peer -peer mode or something, the first one will say, I need this thing uh, from Windows Update, and maybe it gets the whole thing or maybe it gets something else. Uh, the second one will certainly get what are called tags. And the tags that come down are just you know, binary fingerprints of the data that you actually want. And that second, that second node will say, does anybody have these matching blocks? And if nobody does, if the first one didn't keep them or didn't have the tags to map them to, then the second one downloads all the blocks. And now it has the fingerprints and the blocks, and it stores them. And then the third one to come along and say, oh, I want that stuff, gets the tags, say, anybody got this? Yes. And the transfer happens locally. It's not over the wide area anymore. It's locally. Okay? So that's what Branch Cache does, and Bits supports that. So it's worthwhile having this tool and the fairly fluffy code I wrote around it to, to have something to test with or to build from or to use as an example when you want to do the real thing for production, right? Um, so distributed caching. Prequel is that distributed caching system. It's a project I started a while ago. I got to the point of working code, good working code, and then I got distracted by the next one on the list, which is Carnival. All right, it's a project in distress. We got just so far, and then, okay, fine, that's enough. Because there's other stuff to be done. I needed more input from the world around me. People saying, hey, yeah, that's really important. I've got a few people saying, hey, I need that. But I haven't gotten much farther than that, all right? The current code is good. It needs some cleaning up and coalescing and other things like that. Um, and there's a design for a piece called a hosted cache, which could be a very useful tool to have in the open source world. Um, so we're working on that uh, as time permits. Uh, what we need here on this project is interest, support, and collaboration. Right? That's my car as of two weeks ago. I'll just say that um, I had a bad day that day. Uh, so let's talk about Carnival instead. So this is the one I'm working on today. Right? This is what I'm working on now. A long time ago, there was a, um, a Dr. Doolittle movie with Rex Harrison. Who remembers that one? It's way back. Rex Harrison is Dr. I got one. All right. You remember at the end of the movie, he has to leave because everybody thinks he's a murderer. So he has to leave. So he gets on the back of the giant Luna moth and flies to the moon. You remember that? Well, that's what he does. And the reason that works is that the giant Luna moth is... 
always attracted by the shiniest objects. So when it's on Earth, it sees the moon and says, oh, look, and it takes off and flies to the moon. And when it gets to the moon, it says, oh, look, and it sees the Earth and it flies to the Earth because that's shiny. This is my latest shiny, right? This is what I've been working on most recently. Um, it's a prototyping and testing toolkit. It's designed primarily to let you build other things on top of it. Um, and it's written in Python because Python happens to be the most recent object-oriented language that I've happened to learn that I like. Uh, Python 2. Um, and the idea is that I would get you know, faster development out of that. Um, again, it's well documented. Uh, it's a guide. You know, there's a lot of information in there about where to look for why I did this or you know, references to the documentation, things like that. Um, Py Python, PyDoc is what I do a lot of stuff in. Boop. Um, so JSIFS was a whim. Carnival is a bit of a whim too. I do have a little bit of help on it. Uh, again, Mr. Rivera is not here, but he was, he's done some of the coding, which is great. And then there's a friend of ours in India who's done uh, a little bit of work on, us, on it too. Um, we did search for SMB2 plus. Uh, by the way, SMB3 is just a dialect of SMB2. There are a lot of new things in SMB3, but unlike the difference between SMB1 and SMB2, which is a whole different protocol, SMB2 to SMB3 is features. You got features, okay? So I've been writing SMB2 plus as my generic term for what we're dealing with. Um, we searched for other SMB2 plus implementations in Python, and we found nothing. Nothing that was complete, nothing that was consistent, nothing that really showed an understanding of what SMB did. Here's that cathedral thing coming in again. We know this stuff, right? And so we can put in more, more know-how. APIs were not clearly documented. There's no way to know exactly how you're supposed to use it when you're using it. But what's taking so long to get this all done? Well, let's be straight on this. You know, I have another job. I have a full-time job, right? And I've got to do that. Um, what I, you know, I guess I'd love is if somebody wanted me to do this full-time, you know, for pay. But in the meantime, I have time constraints. So does the person I'm working with, the people I'm working with. They have time constraints. Um, it does take time to be as detailed and as cautious as we need to be to come up with a good API, to come up with good documentation, and to make sure that we're fairly complete in the pieces we're doing. We do the PyDoc. We do testing. So there's doc test code in there. So we make sure that we're testing all the pieces and parts we're building. Um, it's careful coding, and, it, and that does take time. Careful coding takes a little bit of effort. Um, but here are our goals. SMB2 support. We're going to skip SMB1. Right? JSIFS already has SMB1 covered. We don't need that. Um, Windows 2003 is the only Windows still under support that has SMB1 only. I'm getting a nod there. Uh, and I think that's going out of support in July? June? July? July. So SMB1 go bye-bye, as far as the Windows world is concerned, all right? So why would we spend time right now doing SMB1 work when we don't have a complete product anyway? If, when we get SMB2 complete, there's still this desire to have SMB1, we can backport it in. We can add it. Um, okay, so, okay, just for testing purposes, I did write up SMB1 negprot and SMB1 echo because those are easy to do. Um, so part of the goal is to share our knowledge, to share understanding of how this stuff works. We want to know, we want to give people knowledge, uh, access, uh, an easy on-ramp to the SMB world. How big is SMB in the world, do you think? I mean, in terms of file protocols, what's the number one? Is it NFS? I don't think so. Okay, I'm getting a lot of, yeah, probably not, okay. How big is NFS compared to SMB? How many shops do you know that run only SMB? And how many shops do you know that run NFS only? Usually, if they're running NFS, there's some SMB there, right? More or less. Very important protocol. Um, I, should, I should also mention, um, you know, okay, 
the fun stuff. Few, few wear an SMB because they want to. Really, that's true. Uh, most wear it because they have to. It's, it's in their face. They have to learn what it's about. Um, what, what I should mention is a, a confer conversation I had with a, a recruiter once a few years back. And she said, yeah, if I put a, a sign out in front of the office to say NFS programmers wanted, I get a line. There are plenty of people who, you know, ready to code up NFS. And if I hire the Goodyear blimp and say SMB coders wanted, I don't get anything, <laughs> right? Because there just aren't enough people who know this. And it's really not that terrible to learn if you want to. So I'm, we're trying to make it easier here. Um, we want to be able to make you know, something that I, it would make it easy for you to go and say, all right, I want to build a simple SMB embedded server. What do I have as an example that I can code, you know, learn from and code against? You, write, you know, take our Python code, and you look at it, and you study it, and you write something else in C. That doesn't break any license. Right? You're writing new code. The old code is still under copyright. We're happy. All right? So you can do that. You could even do it in Python if you want. There are ways to compile Python now, right? Um, and we want to provide a new client for SMB2. Uh, you know, Python is a good language for doing that. Okay, it's not the core language of the Android platform, but it'll give you a starting point, right? Uh, simple apps like file browsers should be able to do an SMB connection and get, uh, get to the... Uh, get to the stuff they're looking for. Uh, so what we have finished so far, uh, once again, we did that NBT layer. I already had it written in C. It was very easy to port over. Um, it was quick and easy to implement. Um, NBT is really not that complicated. Uh, and to be honest, I probably know it as well as anybody else in the world. I've studied it for years. Um, I even sent in corrections to the, the guy, the, one of the folks who originally wrote it, and he said, thank you. <laughs> which is really interesting. Five minutes, thank you. Um, and it was a chance to practice something easy. I, I learned Python a few years back, but I really needed the experience coding something more in depth in order to... Is that a red card? I just want to know. Is that, did I just get the red card? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. uh, um, so it was a chance to start on something I could do fairly well and get, get, my, you know, get my hands busy. Um, by the way, I was right about the lunchtime thing. I'll see below. Uh, okay, sorry about that, folks. I'll keep dancing. Anyway, SMB1, NegProt, Neko, I finished those. Again, one of the reasons for the NegProt is that SMB2 can be negotiated starting from SMB1, and I want to be able to support that. Um, SMB2 servers uh, will respond with either an SMB2 NegProt or by closing the connection if they don't support SMB1 at all. You know, that they just go bye-bye. Um, or and, and if they don't support SMB2 at all, I should say. That's, w that's what they'll do. Um, so uh, the other reason for doing the, um, the echo was, again, it's a very simple test. If you can run an echo against a server, then you know you're, you're doing well. So you can negotiate SMB1, do the echo, and if you try to do any other command, it'll say, nope, sorry, bye, close. Um, first few SMB2 commands are in testing. I've actually got... Some of these things coded up, but they're not ready for prime time. That's the GitHub location. If you want to start looking at this code, and I hope to have the SMB2 module started and up committed sometime, hopefully in the next month. Um, and basically, you know, we've got the easy stuff out of the way so far. Now we're actually working on the hard stuff, and we are working on it. So that's good. That's good news. Uh, this is where I was going to do a demo. Um, but what happened was I started trying to use, I started to build my demo with the idea that I was, would use the Python interface to queues. Queues is character device in user space. It's based on top of Fuse, which also has a Python interface to it. And I tried doing this and I found that none of these are actually, you know, maintained and not documented. And remember what I said about APIs being clear and documented? Yeah, I had nothing. So I spent about a month trying to figure out how to get a Python set of modules to run a queues daemon so I could create a device that would let me do the basics of, um, uh, of uh, SMBIO. Uh, and I found that I couldn't get there. And uh, at least not in the time frame I had. Um, I'm not sure how to solve that problem. I've got some very radical ideas 
on what to do about it. Nobody would like them, so I'm not going to talk about them here. But <laughs> the, uh, the upshot is that I wasted a lot of time trying to come up with a really cool demo instead of give, giving you a useful demo that you could actually see. Um, so summaries, I'm basically done. Questions? Uh, in KDE and other Linux desktops, we it's a common use case to want to share files, but because none of us care about Windows, we don't care about sharing files with Windows, which, which of course kills us for real users. So it, I would love to use the testing lab here to work out um, whether or not we actually do successfully share files and what the best way is to make sure that we're using Samba or one of your other clients or, or servers properly to make sure that we do that. So uh, well, I don't have, uh, I mean, I'm aiming that way. I'm aiming for a toolkit that would let you build a server, right? But Samba is the server right now. Yeah. Just understand, yeah, be clear on that. Um, and, and really, you know, I can't say it enough, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, but yes, I'd, I'd love to sit down with you and talk if you want to just, you know, talk a little bit about what the possibilities are. Okay? Anybody else? You want to know about queues? <laughs> it's a cool idea, just unfortunately it doesn't quite. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, yeah. So imagine that you are writing a letter to Santa Claus. You are asking for a wish to uh, make some progress in the Carnival project. Okay. Uh, and you, uh, you know that the wish is going to be granted. Mm -hmm. What would you ask for? Users, developers, piece of code that is already done? What, what, what is the main blocker in your project that is, uh, that is not allowing you to get to the next step? Um, useful developers. So you said users are developers. I want developers. Remember that slide uh, about, uh, was it your slide about scratching the itch? Or was it somebody else's? Volker's slide. So, okay. So the most useful code in the open, spa open source space was really there to scratch somebody's itch. Many of the developers that, uh, you know, developers who want to do this kind of thing are developers who need to do this. For mm -hmm. some reason, they've got a need to get this done and they want to see it work. Yeah. And so useful developers, developers who are not just, oh, I want to write some code. No, they've got to see the vision. They've got to be able to see this is where I want to go. And it can be their own vision. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be mine. But see where this is going and see the value in it. And this is what happened with JSIP. So I came across somebody who saw that vision clearly and was willing to spend the time I, I understand these protocols really well. And I'm a fairly slow coder, <laughs> to be honest. All right. So what I really would love to have are people who want to do the coding, but would love to have somebody who can say, oh, here's how this works. Here's why that goes that way. Here's what, that's where I'd be happiest. Mm -hmm. That would be my wish. Well, like an architect, yeah. <laughs> but I don't mind getting my fingers dirty. <laughs> Very happy to do that. Okay. We set? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Very, very interesting. Thank you. Right